Good morning everyone, welcome to part two. Um, yesterday I made a picture frame to try and um, resemble a log effect by using cardboard tubes and plaster of Paris and today we're going to paint it but the first part is um, I'm going to be using a gesso primer and I'm just going to cover it. We need to give the gesso primer time to dry before we add some paint later. So. Actually I'm going to use my old brush. I've got a really old decorator's brush and it won't ruin any of my other brushes if I use this. I'm literally just going to be coating it in gesso. Right, I'm going to put the video on to time lapse for the If you don't have any um, gesso, don't panic about it because all, all we're doing is using a primer to coat the plaster. Um, so you can actually use PVA glue or you can even use um, watered down emulsion paint. Um, but any paint primer that you can paint acrylic on will do. So you don't actually have to have gesso. I put a coat and a paint over the top. Okay, so I'm going to be using some raw umber paint which is like a dark brown um, and I'm going to be picking out lines on the tree I want it to look like a silver birch tree so if I can turn this around a little bit hang on Whee, there you go so let's tilt you forward a bit as well can you see that that's there isn't it so when I'm doing the ones the vertical branches I'm going to be working this way because I want the log to look like it's going like that. And then when I'm, um, sorry, they're horizontal. Then when I'm doing the vertical, I'm going to be coming across like this. And then again on the bottom, I'm going to be going up. So we want th these branches looking like they're going horizontal and these ones vertical. It just makes it more effective. So I'm, I'm using a, a two rigger, uh, just a, a little fine can you see that? That's not very. It's not showing very well. Hang on, I will get used to this camera. There you go. <laughs> um, I have a little jar of water, and as I said, some raw raw umber, which is a kind of dark brown. I'm dipping my paintbrush in the water and then taking off the excess, and just picking up a tiny bit of the brown. I only really want to get it on the end of my brush. So I'm going to start off on this side and we've got some knots up here so I want to get some brown in this knot. Oops, sorry about that, that's the plate I'm knocking. I don't think you can see what I'm doing at the moment but hang on. I'm going to try and turn this a little bit more to see if you can see what I'm doing. because I'm also working on the side where the knot is. I'm kind of looking in the plaster. Let's try and zoom in. Oh, my hands are right in the way of the camera there. Let's try and zoom in. It won't do it because I'm, oh, I'll have to do it afterwards. Where the plaster is, I can see natural lines that are formed, and I'm kind of going to be going along those really to give it some. I don't know what these brown bits are called on a on a um, silver birch tree. They're just markings, I suppose. This is really difficult doing it for me at this angle. Mm. 
Now I'm not happy that these um, these brown areas to me are not dark enough so in a second I'm actually going to add some black ivory black to the raw umber just to get some real depth in there as well. Can you see how that's coming out? Doesn't look very effective at the moment, but I'm going to add some black in there in a minute. So as a reminder, where I can see natural lines in the plaster, that's where I'm kind of going over with my brush at the moment with the raw umber. I can't see around this side because of the angle, but I've got the easel, so I actually am going to have to turn this easel a little bit. I'm sorry, hang on a minute. I moved my paint over here. I was looking for my paint then. Can you see how this is looking? Do you know what? I'm going to put some black on my, some ivory black on my palette, only a little bit. And I'm also going to add some yellow ochre. So there's the ivory black. And then we have some yellow ochre. I think the yellow ochre would give it a nice kind of stain effect if I use it watery. So I'm going to show you my palette again now. So I have some ivory black, raw umber and yellow ochre. I'm going to be picking up a little bit of this black I don't like using black straight out of a palette so I'm going to add it with some of the raw umber if you use black straight from the um, tube or the palette it can look a little bit false and a little bit harsh um, oh that's better so right in the very deep creases I'm adding a little bit of this bra uh, black and it, and it kind of gives it some depth to it I'm not covering all of the brown areas, just some. I just need to turn a little minute to get this one here. Now that is looking a lot more effective, wouldn't you agree? I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm going to try and get, I, I want a tiny bit of the shallow ochre. Now see how much I'm using, tiny, tiny bit, and bringing it down here. And with some water, it kind of gives you just a stain. And that's all I want here, is just a stain. I'm going to add some more water. And I'm literally, I'll pick some more of that up. See how I'm using the most tiniest of bit to just give me a staining of yellow ochre. And on some of the areas, that's all I'm doing. 
Oh, look at that. I love that. That looks good. That looks good. So. Oh, that's my chair making all them noises. Now I'm picking up a little bit of the black mixed with the raw umber. I want to get some finer lines in. I'm going to have to turn this way just to, because I can't bend round. We looking guys is that looking like a silver batch okay so i'm going to um speed up now but on this on when i do these hang on let me show you when i do the horizontal i'm going to be going this way across because that's the way i want the branches to be now these these are just random shapes and i'm following marks that are on the plaster so i'm going to time that Some of the lines came out too dark for me, so I'm using a soft brush with a bit of white. And I'm basically now um, going over some of these. So. And it kind of gives it a grey kind of shadow effect. It softens the lines down a bit. And then where it's less than grey on the brush, because I didn't clean the brush, it, it, it makes it, it look quite effective, really. Oh, I've done too much down there, so. See how where I haven't washed my brush, it's kind of leaving some grey marks. That's looking more real, isn't it? It's looking more effective. There you go, I'm quite happy with that. And there we have it. It's a bit dark round here, I might sort that out in a minute. But there's our birch wood frame. You can put a bit of um, perspective, pl plastic perspective, um, perspective, I can't say the word, what am I trying to say? Um, a, anyway, a plastic sheet or, um, or you could take another frame that's the same size and um, attach it to the back so that you've got the glass. Um, but I would probably use a plastic perspex sheet and then put my picture in and then put a bit of board on the back and then I can put it all down together on the back. Anyway, let me know how you got on with yours. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. Alright, take care, stay safe.